Feels good. Come up to the fire, ladies. I'm not cold. Now, Mr. Hale, before we move anything, you tell Mr. Henderson just what you saw here yesterday morning. By the way, has anything been moved? Are things just as you left them yesterday? It's just the same. When it dropped below zero last night, I thought I'd better send Frank out in the, this morning to make a fire for us. You know, he's getting pneumonia with a big case on. But I told him not to touch anything except the stove. You know Frank. Somebody should have been left here yesterday. Uh, oh, yesterday. When I had to send Frank to Moore's Center for that man who went crazy, I want you to know I had my hands full yesterday. I knew you could get back from Omaha by today, and as long as I went over everything here myself. Well, Mr. Hale. Mr. Hale. Can you tell us just what happened when you came here yesterday? Harry and I started to town with a load of potatoes. We came along the road from my place as I got here and said, I'm going to see if I can't get John Wright to go in with me on a tardy telephone. I spoke to Wright about it once before and he put me off, saying folks talk too much anyway, and all he asked was peace and quiet. I guess you know about how he much talked to himself. But I thought maybe if I went to the house and talked about it before his wife, though I said to Harry I didn't know as to what his wife wanted made much difference to John. I knocked at the door, and still it was quiet inside. I knew they must be up. It was past 8 o'clock, so I knocked again. I thought I heard somebody. I wasn't sure. I'm not sure yet, but I opened the door. This door. And there, in that rocker, sat Mrs. Wright. Let's talk about that later, Mr. Hale. I do want to talk about that, but tell me now just what happened when you got to the house. She was rocking back and forth. She had her apron in her hand and was kind of pleating. And how did she look? Well, she looked queer. How do you mean queer? Well, as if she didn't know what she's going to do next. All kind of done up. How did she seem to feel about your coming? Why, I don't think she minded one way or another. She didn't pay much attention. I said, how do, Mrs. Wright? It's cold, ain't it? And she said, is it? And went on kind of pleading at her apron. Well, I was surprised. She didn't ask me to come up to the stove or to sit down, but just sat there, not even looking at me. So I said, I want to see John. And then she laughed. I guess you would call it a laugh. I thought of Harry and the team outside, so I said a little sharp, Can I see John? No, she says, kind of dull-like. Ain't he home, says I? Yes, says she. He's home. Then why can't I see him, I asked her, out of patience. Because he's dead, says she. Dead, says I? She just nodded her head, not getting a bit excited, but rocking back and forth. Why, where is he, says I, not knowing what to say. She just pointed upstairs, like that. I got up with the idea of going up there. I walked from there to here, then, says I, why, what did he die of? He died of a rope around his neck, says she, and just went on pleating at her apron. Well, I went out and called Harry. I thought I might need help. We went upstairs, and there he was lying. I think I'd rather have you go into that upstairs, where you can point it at all out. Just go on now with the rest of the story. Well, my first thought was to get that rope off. It looked. But Harry, he went up to him and he said, Oh, he's dead all right. We better not touch anything. So we went back downstairs. She was still sitting that same way. Has anybody been notified, I asked? No, says she, unconcerned. Who did this, Mrs. Wright, said Harry. He said it business-like, and she stopped pleating her apron. I don't know, she says. You don't know, says Harry. No, says she. Weren't you sleeping in the bed with him, says Harry? Yes, says she, but I was on the inside. Somebody slipped a rope around his neck and strangled him. You didn't wake up, says Harry. I didn't wake up, she said after him. 
It looked as if we didn't see how that could be, for after a minute she said, I sleep sound. Harry was going to ask her more questions, but I said maybe we ought to let her tell her, tell her story first to the coroner, or the sheriff. So Harry went fast as he could to Rivers' place, where there was a telephone. And what did Mrs. Wright do when she knew that you had gone for the coroner? She moved from that chair to this one over here. And just sat there, with her hands held together and looking down. I got a feeling that I ought to make some conversation. So I said I had come in to see if John wanted to put in a telephone. And at that she started to laugh, and then she stopped and looked at me. Scared. I don't know, maybe it wasn't scared. I wouldn't like to say it was. Soon Harry got back, and then Dr. Lloyd came, and you, Mr. Peters. And so I guess that's all I know that you don't. I guess we'll go upstairs first, and then out to the barn, and around there. You're convinced that there was nothing important here? Nothing that would point to any motive? Nothing but kitchen things. Ugh! Well, here's a nice mess! Oh, her fruit! It did freeze! She worried about that when it turned so cold. She was worried the fire'd go out and her jars would break. Well, can you beat the women? Held for murder and worrying about their preserves. I guess before we're through, she may have something more serious than preserves to worry about. Well, women are used to worrying over trifles. And yet, for all their worries, what would we do without the ladies? Dirty towels! Not much of a housekeeper, wouldn't you say, ladies? There's a great deal of work to be done on a farm. To be sure. And yet, I know there are some Dixon County farmhouses which do not have such roller towels. Those towels get dirty awful quick. Men's hands aren't always as clean as they might be. Ah. Loyal to your sex, I see. But you and Mrs. Wright were neighbors. I suppose you were friends, too. I've not seen much of her of late years. I've not been in the house. It's more than a year. And why was that? You didn't like her? I liked her all well enough. Farmer's wives have their hands full, Mr. Henderson. And then... Yes? It never seemed a very cheerful place. <sighs> no. It's not cheerful. I shouldn't, sh shouldn't say she had the homemaking instinct. Well, I don't know his right head either. You mean they didn't get on very well? No, I don't mean anything. But I don't think a place would be any cheerfuler for John Wright's being in it. I'd like to talk about a little later. I want to get the lay of things upstairs then. I suppose anything Mrs. Peters does will be all right. She was taking some clothes for her, you know, and a few little things. We left in such a hurry yesterday. Yes, but I would like to see what you take, Mrs. Peters. And uh, keep an eye out for anything that you might find useful. Yes, Mr. Henderson. I'd hate to have men come into my kitchen, snooping around and criticizing. Of course, it's no more than duty. Yes, duty's all right. But I guess that deputy sheriff that came out to make the fire might have got a little this on. Wish I thought of that sooner. Seems mean to talk about her for not having things slicked up when she had to come away in such a hurry. She had a bread set. She was going to put this in there. It's a shame about her fruit. I wonder if it's all gone. I think there's some in here. Mrs. Peters, yes, here. And it's cherries, too. I declare, I believe that's the only one. She'll feel awful bad after all her hard work in the hot weather. I remember the afternoon I put my cherries up last summer.
Well, I must go get those things from the front closet. You coming with me, Mrs. Hale? Why, it's cold in there. Why well, was close. I think maybe that's why she kept so much to herself. She didn't even belong to the ladies' aid. I suppose she felt she couldn't do her part. And then you don't enjoy things when you feel shabby. She used to wear pretty clothes and be lively. She was Minnie Foster, one of the town girls singing in the choir. But that, uh, that was 30 years ago. Uh, this all you was to take in? She said she wanted an apron. Funny thing to want, but there isn't much to get you dirty in jail. Goodness knows. But I suppose, just to make her feel more natural, she said they were in the top drawer behind this cupboard. Ah yes, here. And that little shawl always hung behind the door. Ah, there it is. Mrs. Peters? Yes, Mrs. Hale. Do you think she... did it? Oh, I don't know. Well, I don't think she did it. Asking for an apron and a little shawl? Worrying about her fruit? Miss, Mr. Peters says it's bad for her. Mr. Henderson is awful sarcastic in his speech, and he'll make fun of her saying she didn't wake up. Well, I guess John Wright didn't wake up when they were slipping that rope under his neck. No, it's strange. It must have been gone awfully crafty and stiff. They say it was such a funny way to kill a man, rigging it all up like that. That's just what Mr. Hale said. There was a gun in the house. He says it's what he can't understand. Mr. Henderson said coming out from her at that was was needed for the case was a motive. Something to show anger or some feeling. Well, I don't see any signs of anger around here. It's wiped too here. I wonder how they are finding things upstairs. I hope she had a little more red up up there. You know, it seems kind of sneaking. Locking her up in town and then coming out here, trying to get her own house to turn against her. Well, Mrs. Hale, the law is the law. I suppose tis. Better loosen up your fingers, Mrs. Peters. You won't feel them when you go out. She was piecing a quilt. It's a log cabin pattern. Pretty, isn't it? Yes. I wonder if she was going to quilt it, or just knot it. I wonder if she was just going to quilt it or knot it. <laughs>